All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Yes, yes, yes. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. Mark's running a little bit late, so he'll be along momentarily. But for now, we got Hude, St. Louis KISS, who is uh, illubiant um, about his team winning this. It's a victory Thursday still. Yeah. No, good. Good for them to get a win, even if it was... uh, I won't bring you okay. down. That'd they don't count nice. ugly wins. They just count wins. A win is a win. That's the only thing that matters. All right. St. Louis kiss. We got a uh, 69 blizzard. Ken. Um, hey. Mark Mark will be here. We're going to go through. Well, kiss is in Australia. Mark is busy uh, preparing his uh, for a burp aroma. A burp aroma. <laughs> so he's drinking a bunch of root beer before the show. So it's Yeah. Fun. I'm, I'm I'm getting my uh, Johnny Walker Gold Label Reserve on, um, so I may I may well be belching later. I did a little bit of afternoon drinking. Uh, I fell down a Queensryche rabbit hole. I don't often listen to Queensryche, but uh, live mind crime, and then you know I've got I've got the greatest tits. I just uh, kind of went into that today. So I want to thank everyone for joining us live. It's always nice to see some of the same names and faces. Opal Archive, Ronnie Parker, Bill Phelps, Anthony Stratus, Austin Newland, Tim G, Brent Millhouse. Make sure I didn't miss anyone up at the top. Thank you for being here live. Oh, Mark's in the green room waving. Mark, should we let you into the show? Hey, Mark. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Out walking the dog again. Broke your needle. Now you can't. So... All right, so getting into today's topics, we're going to be hitting the board and going through some of those topics. There are some things to go through. KISS is currently in Australia. They sound checked for the AFL final pre-show. Apparently and allegedly, purportedly, they did. They pulled out some old gems, some rarely heard songs, shouted out loud, I was made for loving you. (laughs) And... Can anyone wow. guess the final song? Come on. Cold Gin? Rock and Roll Night. Ken is clearly sensible, Mark. Cold Gin. Was it? <laughs> oh, my God. Of course it was Rock and Roll All Night. So oh. Again, for the sort of format for what they're doing with the AFL footy, and it's Aussie Rules football, obviously. If you haven't had the chance to experience Aussie Rules, uh, check it out. It is absolutely fucking mental compared to Bengals. If you think about what your boys do with a bunch of protection. Bengals. Um, yeah, no, if you see what those guys do without anything, maybe mouth guards, it is freaking insane. Um, so do check it out. It should be fun. Paul was on TV, apparently dropping meatloaf references, which was... That's got some people up in arms because apparently Meatloaf previously did a performance, and that is the late Meatloaf did a performance there, which wasn't one of the better live performances by oh. pre show act previously. He didn't use backing tracks then. I, I thought no. he was talking, I was making a cooking reference. No, d- Meatloaf. It's Brussels sprouts or nothing for the star oh, okay. child. Right. So, so here we are. That's that. Uh, what other news? Well, A video for Calling Dr. Love by the Kiss This Tribute has dropped. You can see that on the FAQ and on YouTube. Uh, It's coming from the forthcoming Buffalo Rock City 2 tribute album. Mm. And the great thing about this tribute is that it raises money for a very worthy cause, in this case, the Maria Love Convalescent Fund. Um, So do check that out. It's hilarious. You know, Mm -hmm. just take off your critical hat for a minute and enjoy something for what it's supposed to be, something to be enjoyed. Um, I think they do an absolutely kick-ass job. I did hear a teaser for Shoot You Full of Love, I believe it was, and the singer they've got on that tribute track um, absolutely knocks it out of the park. So well Mm -hmm. done to all the Buffalo Rock City people. Did I offend Lonnie? No. Yeah, with that Bengals comment. No, he said that yeah. his videos are a bit choppy. 
Oh, uh, well, well, no Netflixing while podcasting is yes, cool. that, would, that would help. So, uh, all right. So what other news is there? Um, as we posited in the last episode, which was also live, the Psycho Circus announcement did indeed happen. And uh, I, I'm not going to say that it's a plethora because it really is becoming a little bit more um, focused on what the merchandise is. In this case, there aren't any RIAA awards, just like there weren't for Lick It Up. Those seem, seem to be done now. Um, yeah. Josh, thank you for joining and for giving me the, the quick notes. I don't have to flip back over to Kiss Online. There was a picture disc bundle limited to 500 units bundled with a hoodie. So I actually grabbed that because I need a new hoodie because my Odyssey one's falling apart. Um, so that was quite timely. And the picture disc I'll flip out to someone who missed it at cost. Um, Thomas Altrop, thank you for joining. Uh, it was gone in 18 minutes, apparently. Lick it up. It's actually 2,500 units in silver vinyl. And people are already receiving theirs. So now I should be getting mine soon too. The yeah. the colored vinyl is is the yeah. the, the silver colored vinyl is already shipping, already in people's hands. It's already sold out on Kiss Online, but it's popped back into availability, leading me to believe that not all twenty five hundred units were. There's immediate. more. Yeah, well, I don't think they were all assigned to the store. My thought was that they were going to split it between Kiss Online exclusive and then perhaps to an exclusive retailer. Sound of vinyl, probably, I'm guessing. Yeah, so, well, something like that or anything like that. It, it wouldn't do any harm for it to be any of those. But mm -hmm. um, let's go through some of the merch that was offered. So obviously you had those two bundles. Each comes with, uh, well, actually the uh, Greatest Show on Earth t-shirt. Shit, I didn't get the one with the hoodie. Oh, well, live and learn. Um, the long sleeve t-shirt, right? No, it's a short sleeve t-shirt. And oh I, I guess i didn't care that much because uh i went to dodger Here's stadium i still have those two t-shirts so they've got the we are one t-shirt which looks like shit because it's got those kind of circusy characters um the greatest show on earth t-shirt which it's okay i think all right i got that one too yeah the four who are one t-shirt which makes me want to vomit um <laughs> the women the women's t-shirt which has the you wanted the best artwork on it a wall flag i actually had a prototype throw rug for psycho circus at one point really yeah the cornhole set i mean those things must be selling why, they are, why on... are they selling those seriously who, who's, those are expensive. who's buying <laughs> who's buying these cornhole things and, you know people and you know the funny thing is here in Canada, I don't know how it is in, in America, but in Canada, when when you refer to a cornhole, that usually means someone's asshole. You know? <laughs> yeah, so ex I don't, exactly. So I don't know why you yeah. would want a cornhole set, you know? God. Let's play yeah. cornhole. Well, Kiss is popular <laughs> in the Midwest, and maybe they like their Change cornholes the there, whether it's the game or the... <laughs> Beanbag throw. Mark's, uh -huh. Mark's alternative. So... Uh yeah. Whatever it, it does make for you know it's a fun enough game. I prefer lawn darts, but they made that illegal. Uh, they got a lithograph, yeah. a card set, and I believe the uh, the Paul makeup was reversed on quite a few of these images. The mm. button set was sold out when okay. I I checked in. So who ordered what? I obviously did the uh, picture disc bundle. Ken, what did you get? I did get the picture disc bundle, like you with the the t shirt, and then the. Uh... The colored vinyl uh, by itself I, I got that so and that's gonna be bundled it's gonna be shipped uh together uh probably on uh, november mm -hmm. i guess or whatever <laughs> when the other one's available i didn't have a split sh shipment so i'll have to wait a little longer for the colored vinyl yeah the card set does look cool i i will say but That's i not think bad, the, yeah. uh, in this day and age reverse makeup on official product it's also backwards on the four who are one t-shirt I mean, that's no they got the us the the right way around on that uh <laughs> on that image so it, it's inexcusable mark what did you purchase yeah. or what would you consider purchasing or was it all a bucket of piss uh well after my long soliloquy about picture discs, you know that that was the one thing I was definitely not going to buy, of course, because to me it's just an utter waste of money. But uh, I did I buy I waste more money. Yeah, well, I mean, you'll buy anything from Kiss, but you're just not anything. No, you'll no, buy, no, you'll no. buy anything. Not uh, but 
but I, I've just bought the colored vinyl and that's it. I mean, that's good enough for me. The colored vinyl has always been good that they've done. And, you know, you know, when I, here's the thing, when I buy something from these guys, I want to actually open it and actually want to listen to yeah. it. You know, I don't want to just, you know, leave, ooh, leave it in the shrink and like leave it on my shelf so people can admire that I haven't opened my record for the next 10 years. How smart am I? You know, but, uh, you know, I, I just I want to listen to my stuff and I want it to sound d decent. You know, picture just don't sound. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, the technology is much better. It's like, OK, but it still doesn't sound anywhere as good as the vinyl, not even close. OK, so. I just bought the vinyl. That's all I bought. No cornhole sets, no 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 shirts, no no playing cards or any shit like that. I just bought a vinyl and that's it. Yeah. How many picture discs do you have? I have uh, about eight. They're all Bowie. Okay. Okay. No rush. Uh one rush, the hemispheres. Okay. All right. I think, I think all my picture discs are ace frelly. <laughs> oh, and I got an Ace Freely one too, the Anomaly one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so okay. they're they're moving his merch out. There's a sale, or there was a sale on another sale. Yeah, yeah, you know, getting rid of some some of the coolest vinyls already gone. Hey, but, you know, what? Well, Ask me how many times I played those pictures at picture discs. Okay, Mark, how many times have you played those pictures? Zero, nada, never. There you go. Sorry, because they sound Julian. they sound like shit. Are you going to play the Psycho Circus vinyl? Yes, of course. You are. You're gonna play yeah. the silver. You're gonna play silver vinyl. Yeah, the colored vinyl sounds fine. Okay, it it, it does, huh? It's the same I, I, as yeah, the two thousand. It's the two thousand. The same. It's the same pressing. Yeah. Plates or whatever. We shall see. I I've never found that those uh, serious colors sound very good. And then again, I'm behind playing any vinyl. I bought the slaughter box set for real life. Mm -hmm. um, or or wildlife, whatever it is, and I still haven't gotten around to it. So, all right, let's jump into some of the board topics from the week. Okay. Um, we, we've, um, I, I guess, we have to start with the Kissianic entity, and is Psycho Circus the song a milestone in history? I can only start with Mark on that. Mm -hmm. Is it a milestone? Is it a new classic? Is it a a song that can join the pantheon of kiss hits such as Beth? The Psycho Circus. We're talking, I, I'm pretty sure. Didn't we talk about that once before? We might have talked about that, but in my in my opinion, I would say yes. I think it is a classic. I think if if anything, it's probably their last real true classic. I think. That they wrote, uh, because uh, you know the, the records that came after, they had some great songs on there. But I mean, honestly, I don't think modern day Delilah is as good as Psycho Circus. Nor do I think that uh, you know, uh, Hell or Hallelujah is anywhere as good as Psycho Circus. I think Psycho Circus was Paul still trying at a, you know trying his hardest to make another classic, another Detroit rock city, if you will. Or something like that. I, I definitely think it has all the in good ingredients to be a classic too. It has a memorable guitar solo, uh, great chorus, and you know, just like uh, you know some of the other classics, uh, you know, it has a topic that people seem to enjoy. So I think it is a good song. Yeah, I, I mean, when when it's put into the phrasing of "is it a mi a kiss milestone," I have to assume that that means classic. And yeah, it certainly is one of the most identifiable songs yeah. of the last 25 years. So whether it makes me queasy or not is kind of irrelevant. Um, but it's a very good song. I actually do enjoy it, hearing it. It's a song that Tommy played on the guitar I bought from the, the Tommy experience. Um, and it was actually the first song that I played on that same guitar simply because it was tuned. And that was uh, <laughs> one of the songs that had been played on it. So uh, it, it is. Are there other Kiss classics that have followed? I think there are. Um, and I kind of agree with Paul's measuring of what makes a Kiss classic. Um, I think Psycho Circus is a far better song live without that intro than it mm. is um, on, on the album. But again, you can edit that out if you so desire. All right, Mr. Reason, give us the word. Well, 
is, is it i guess it's a, it's kind of a classic in, in a way but it's not a uh yeah maybe it's not a classic <laughs> i changed my mind on it i think it's a very good song it's one of their you know last great songs that they've done on an album um but and you know they play it live i i enjoy it when they play it live um it's all good uh but to to rank it with something like you know deuce or something like that that's it's totally different right it's deuce is a, a real classic oh Psycho i see what Circus the problem is. is is a good song but uh is that because gene didn't sing classic. it right no, even Gene's songs are not all classic, you know? Come on. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah. But you said you, you just compared it to Deuce, but could you put it in the same category as, say, a Lick It Up? Yeah, yeah, it's almost in. It's kind of a step below. It's better lick than it Lick It Up. I think it's a step below Lick It Up. No way. Not even close. Yeah. Just a little bit. Look it up is glorious in its simplicity. It's simple. That's why it, it works so well. I, you know, it's basically it's what can song, we do? I, what can you what can you do with one chord? We're tired of it. Yeah, no, I'm tired of looking up. You know, but uh, it's it's it's. I guess it's similar in a way to look it up. Yes, I agree. agree. It definitely and, kills and being importance, I guess. So we've had some uh, folks tuning in live. Wolf of Nature, Gregory Muse. Well, Greg. Um, Mount of Harlech, well, not Harlech, but where, where's Drago? David Parrish, thank you for joining us live as always. Uh, better than Lick It Up, come on now, yeah. Yes, yeah, of exactly. course it is. Much exactly. better. It is not better than Lick It Up. Much better. Lick It Up is a classic that can sit in the same paragra paragraph, mm -hmm. or maybe on the same page as Deuce. All right, let's move on. Uh, I didn't get to this hmm. topic last week. And you guys call me out on it. It was Instead of See You in Your Dreams, the song that Gene re recorded in 1978 because he said he wasn't completely happy with how Kiss had captured it on Rock and Roll Over. And I really can't hear that much of a difference. Pick another Gene song for his 1978 album. And it means you have to kind of dig into your mental vault. Now, Ken has the vault. So he'll know exactly what comes from around that time that Gene should have been using instead of recycling a song from two years previous. So I'll go to Mark first. <laughs> go to me. <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't I don't own the vault, and I neither, neither do vault. most people. Do they still have heard yeah. the fucking thing? Yeah. Well, I mean, I have I have access to it, but uh, it's. It, I mean, are we talking about unreleased songs, or are we talking about just other songs that Kiss did that he would redo, just like he did that song? You know that that that's the thing that I'm not too clear on here. But I I I'll, let me just go to uh, Pat Hayden. Um, no, I'm not high. I am definitely imbibing. But um, I would say that Lick It Up and Deuce are closer. To one another than lick it up and psycho circus so mm. take that for what it was so mark back to mm. the replacement gene song it's something contemporaneous so there's there's a lot of shit from that uh period that didn't make it onto kiss albums so which one of those kind of songs do you think that maybe he could have been mm. I don't know, honestly. I mean, I, I can't. I can't really think of anything. Because I mean, like I said, I'm not. I'm not a Gene guy. You know. I mean, I don't. I don't know much of his back catalog stuff at all, or the stuff that he hasn't done. I mean, the only thing I know that he hasn't done is like you know, like this Rock and Rolls Royce and these songs that we all all know of that are that mm -hmm. haven't been released before, right? Okay, so at the time, there's stuff like Howling for Your Love. Um, someone's mentioned High and Low, um, which I think became Suspended Animation. Um, so, Suspended Animation. Uh, Rotten to the Core. Stuff like that. Ken? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I thought what would fit on there and be kind of cool would be doing... Uh, the song Master of Flash. Master of Flash is a song that Gene did not write, but it's 
a song that's on the vault that he bought from a guy who the artist who actually you know wrote it um, and thought it was so cool that he he you know he bought it from him basically so uh, there's a demo of that and it's really cool and I, Mark I think you would like it because it's it's Bowie ish it's it's similar to a David Bowie type style song uh the way it is i think you'd like it really um so that's that's the song i would like to you know be inserted there you know on the instead of you know the rehash of see you in your dreams yeah so it's very theatrical it really does have kind of the jabriath um it, well john montgomery who wrote it wasn't he in okay so he, hmm. he was he was from that whole New York City glam scene that Kiss emerged from in the early days, not quite Magic hmm. Tramps and that realm. Um, but I, I'd have to re reread one of the things I've fucking written about it to <laughs> remember the full history. You have it in the book. Yeah, Your which book. I, I yeah, which I can't remember off the top of my head because there's I so can much. Pull shit. it out. That's one of the rare well, books I don't have of yours. Yeah, please don't pull it out on the air. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we get in trouble for that um Posed. for it's me uh, again a lot of the reason that gene stuff doesn't get used is because it's really pretty bad but i i think he could have finished yeah you. yeah no i think he could have done something with howling for your love i mean something that was really in character it's, yeah that's a lot of stuff i mean obviously there was a lot of songs that, he, that were left behind you know um, I'm just I'm just looking at a list of some well, stuff. I mean, the best unrecorded Gene song that's ever he's ever written is "It's My Life." The, hands down, that's the best song that he probably did that never made it on on a record. It's with Paul, yeah, because he didn't really write it. It was because Paul, Paul started it. Yeah. Okay, well, it's it's always been sort of a tag to him for some reason. You know, he, it appears on the Wendy Williams album and stuff like that, and he produced it and blah blah. blah you know, so I've always kind of associated it with him, but. You know, so if it's a Paul song as well, then there you go. Yeah, so which Paul song should Gina put on his album? <laughs> <laughs> Sword, and, <laughs> Sword and Stone. Yeah, so. Yeah. Let's anyway. See. All right, moving, moving on. All right, this is a good one for Mark. Do you okay. favor original vinyl pressings over the reissues? Uh, what, are the, what are the pluses and minuses to people who prefer the analog kid? Um, <laughs> well, first of all, I'll start with this. The 2014 reissues are really good. They were done very well. I've never had an issue with them at all. Uh, they they sound good. Uh, yes, they were they were you know they were taped from the tapes and then I think they were digitally sourced uh, from the tape, right? Uh, but they still sound fantastic. Um, th I do prefer the, the the original analog pressings of the tapes of the albums, uh, just simply because I think that back then uh, the people that were working on the lacquers and working on the mastering for vinyl were much more experienced in it. Because don't forget, vinyl went the way of the dodo bird for a long time. Yes, I know you're going to say, no, it didn't. There were still people making vinyl, blah, blah, blah. Okay, for DJs and shit like that, maybe in the 90s or 2000s. But you didn't have really the Bob Ludwigs in hot pursuit, nor did you have, you know, some of the other here, like the Bernie Grunmans and all these other guys, Kevin Grays and all these people, you know. The, the, these Kevin Gray's a newer guy, but I mean, back in the day, yeah, you had all those, you, you had all those, mastering people you know K gilbert kong you know you had all those people that were renowned pressing people you know and they were doing it on a daily basis and and it was much more you know the standard of what people were listening to as far as audio was concerned so i definitely love like early pressings or, or first pressings of those kiss records because and i've always said this before when those first pressings were done 
they were done with the way that the producer or the band wanted to do hear them in mind. Now, when we're in the, the in the era of the reissues, some of these some of these artists aren't even alive, and you have people reissuing their albums and doing things to them that I don't know if the artist would even would even agree to making changes to some of the stuff. So I always prefer to go with the originals because I think the originals sound more authentic to what the artist wanted to begin with. Interesting. You touched on one thing that really does come to mind uh, is that the people who were doing mastering and cutting the lacquers back in the day um, were basically scientists. Mm -hmm. I mean, they looked at oscilloscopes and all that, you know, voodoo wizardry. You know, mm -hmm. you didn't mention uh, Todd Jensen is another yes, yes. one of the masters. Ted Jensen? Yeah, Ted. Ted Jensen. Yeah, Ted Jensen. You. yeah. You, you know, Robert so... Ludwig. What I go to the most is kind of all over the place. The Destroyer vinyl for, I think it was, a, I can't remember what year the reissue came out, but it was a Japanese 200 mm. gram. Yeah, I have that one, yeah. Which was just absolutely spectacular. A lot of the Japanese pressings have an attention to detail and quality that is just spectacular. Um, a lot of British copies back for Pi or EMI were pretty good. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of original US vinyl. But again, one of uh, the folks on, on, the, on the chat kind of mentioned that it depends where you are as well. There are a lot of trash pressings out there. Oh, yeah. Most, most of the polygram reissues from the 80s. Oh, the crap, reissues. Yeah. They are just complete yeah. trash. Um, but these days, I don't listen to vinyl. I listen to predominantly p33 c cd series japanese issues from the first <laughs> cd release because yeah. they did them properly compared to the u.s cd issues yeah, and it, it seems that just about everything <laughs> else has been based on the audio aesthetics that they established that's the baseline the 97 remasters were basically just louder versions of those with very few exceptions. So those have been the ones that my ears are used to the most. Now, if I listen to something and it sounds slightly different, I go back to what's programmed into my brain as my comfort mm -hmm. level. So it really doesn't matter a damn. Everything else that's newer is generally too fucking loud anyway. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just ruined. I mean, that was a big problem for the creatures box and destroyer for that matter that it's still redlined and so hot that it's just pointless lonnie favorite Hi. uh kind of pressing welcome back glad you've got your thank you I had internet favor. issues yeah hmm. first world problems do you favor original pressings over reissues um i like the original pressings but and when the 2014 vinyls came out i told myself you know what I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to rebuy everything again, but I'm a liar. And I ended up rebuying everything again. Yes, sir, and my reasoning was <laughs> when I want to listen to a vinyl, do I really want to pull out that 1974, 1975, 1976 edition, or do I, or should I just leave them be? at this point so that became my modus operandi it's like you know i'm gonna start buying these reissues so that those are the ones that i play and i just leave those originals where they're at but less contact with my hands and everything else the better just to leave them so um well i appreciate mark's point that mark said you know that you know, these these original pressings that's how they're originally intended to be listened to um for me when i listen to vinyl i listen to the 2014 reissues because no they're excellent I, my standard yeah, yeah. And, they, and they are good and i but i understand mark's point at the same time but that's just because of their age and they're they're approaching you know 50 yeah. years old that you know what i'm just gonna leave them be yeah you're and looking at them more like them they're, they're, they're more precious to you now they are so when I want to listen to them, I, I don't want anything to happen to them because they meet those original pressings mean so much to me that when I want to listen to something, I listen to the 2014 ratios. And I'm a, you and just, I'm a you've just been... A, a, sorry, go ahead. No, you continue. I'll interrupt you again at the end. 
<laughs> I was just going to say, That's and also, it, 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 not to mention that if you did ruin an, an OG version of it, it probably cost you a testicle and two legs to get another copy of it, right? So I don't have a testicle to spare, Mark. Let me tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> now, Lonnie, you you were saying that you've just been running again, you know, after a bit of a. I have I ran six last night. It was good. Yeah, so I'm I'm curious when you go running, what what are you listening to? Have you ported analog into your running device or i i whatever? Or are you using the iTunes shit? No, I I port my CDs. I do not use iTunes. I I port my CDs into there. I I I told my wife when we got married nine years ago that we are a CD family, sister, <laughs> and and we we do not buy anything on iTunes. If you want to buy a song on iTunes. That's fine, but if you want an album, we buy CDs in this house. Let me let's 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 play down <laughs> some, some ground rules here. So so no, um, no, I, I I I listen to my CDs. I, I love my CDs, and I always will. And I'll sound like an old man, but I'll never get rid of them. You know. No, I'm I'm with you. Um, See, I love I, 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 I love I love analog analog yeah, See? I told you guys the other day, like on Psycho Circus anniversary, like oh, I'm going to run the Psycho Circus, and I like it was not very inspiring at all. <laughs> 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 We've ripped on Psycho Circus enough over the last month, though, so it's time to. Yeah, look. I finally found my way to you, and you end up in Carl's Jr. or something. Right. I can't take it anymore. I did get this today, though. That's kind of nice. Oh, there so you go. go. You did get one. Are you going to open it, and are you going to play it? No, I have my 2014 reissue for that. Oh, and, we'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it and it arrived obviously fast. It looks great. You know, it looks fantastic. How's the condition? Nobody, no ding corners. I've I no, no ding corners. Winching. It was not taped very well, so I was a little nervous getting it out of the, uh, uh, the cardboard. Uh, like an oh geez, it's gonna be one of those. But um no don't no ding corners. Looks really really sharp. I must say, your so, mail call is way more interesting than the two boxes of tea I got in today. But, <laughs> oh, tea. Nice. I, I can't live without it. The world doesn't start until I've had my tea. All right, Ken, let's get to you. Um, original vinyl or reissues? Original vinyl first pressings are the ones, the go-to ones. And first pressing, and if you can do it, if you have it, and can get it, you know, if you can get a, your hands on a promotional copy, that's what you're going to want to uh, listen to. It, it may even sound a little slightly better even than the another first pressing that that's out there because that's what, you know, they, they've they shipped out first or, or pressed first, those prom promotional copies. Um, you know, and the thing is, there are some decent ones, you know, represses, but usually, usually not. Usually, the the original first pressing of anything is going to sound better uh, than the stuff. Now, the 2014s were, you know, pretty good job. You know, they they were pretty good, but uh, against the first pressing, it, it's not as you know, the the separation. But, of, there is, is exceptions there. though. There is exceptions though. The there one are, album that I'll say. That, that the 2014 sounds better than the original, in my opinion, is Hotter Than Hell. Hotter Than Hell suffered mm -hmm. very much in the original <laughs> form. I think the 2014 fixed some little discrepancies in there and made it market a, you know, a little bit better in the clarity version of it uh, than, than the just, original version. Just the mastering. Just yeah. the mastering. Yeah. Same source tapes. It's just oh, how, yeah, they yeah. Treat, I know. How, how they treat it on the assembly line. Opal Archive raised a really good point. Cassette tape. Yes, I and, agree with yeah. that. Yeah, because I bought most of my music in the mm -hmm. 80s as, as the cassettes, the 85 polygrams, that was my baseline for many years. So, And that's why for some releases, I, I, I just go hard and heavy to find cassette versions. Dawkins the original Breaking the Chains European mm. mix, I had to get that on cassette so I could get a good analog transfer of that without any of the pops or shit that comes through from the, the vinyl. Same with Motley Crue Leather, Too Fast for Love. I was able to, I, well, I was totally lucky when I found one of okay. that. And, yeah, and pulled good. that in. That is the ultimate listening experience. I mean, even Motley Crue put yeah. a fucking vinyl rip on music to crash your car to. Um, uh, Twisted Sister, Under the Blade the original Pete Way mix of that, mm -hmm. I believe it was. I, again, I go to 
cassette for those, but a lot of the Kiss albums, as bad as those fucking cassettes were in 1985, they were the ones that I listened to. So um, to, to this day, I do, I do remain a cassette aficionado. Yeah, Rat, I, I love Ratty I love PT as well. So yeah, I, I I love cassettes. I have a I have a ton of Kiss ones. Actually, I got all the solo albums. I got Dynasty. I got so many of their albums uh, on cassette. Uh, I even got a couple of one or two really odd ones too. But um, yeah, but but he's right though. In terms of analog experience, it it is probably the closest you'll get. To, to having a, a quarter inch tape, you know what I mean? But the thing is though, and you have to keep this in mind, you have to keep your cassettes in good condition. And the main thing is that you better make sure you're cleaning that, that tape deck. I mean, I was that was grilled into my head when I was working in studio. Hey, they had me in there all the time with the Q-tips and the alcohol and the cleaning the heads and the oh, you know, yeah. all the pinch rollers and all that. And as long as you keep your cassette player in tip top shape and you make sure your cassettes are rewound all the time and don't leave them you know stuck in the middle you know for days on end you know that then you're going to have a good listening experience with tape yeah pitch control and again it comes back i've told the stories mm. on the show before about going into the studio to actually have cassette tapes professionally transferred and mm. sitting there dialing in an oscilloscope to get that fucking head alignment completely bang on um mm -hmm. and it makes a world of difference i mean th there's a new kiss box set um that's a bootleg one that had memphis alive 76 so that's i think the march 76 show i own that master tape but it circulates yeah. from a rip that was done prior to me owning it and the fucking tape had a fault the the, the uh the shell and the people who had it originally and transferred it didn't give a fuck about that. They just <laughs> transferred it and put it out there um, on the hoarder market. And when I got it, I repaired the tape and actually got a way better transfer. So nice. how mm. you treat your equipment can remember, boys, clean your head. And mm -hmm. it was fucking you know, whether you're doing real transfers, eight tracks <laughs> or whatever. Keep that head nice and clean. Um, it's good advice, Julian. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we like to be an informative podcast here. So. Yes. All right. So let's move on. I guess this is more informational than anything. Uh, Talvis, I, I know this guy. I've known him for years. Um, the Scandinavians are some of the best fans in the world. But a few, was it? Last year or something, he shared some Peter Chris. And this is the Chris Band 1995 demo tracks. What's really cool that he came back with last week was they had the multi tracks for these Chris demos, and they've done 2023 mixes of this material. And it is so fucking exciting that, you know, whether you like Chris or not, that music that was being done was pretty wild for Peter Chris's, you know, kind of aesthetic again. Um, but to have the opportunity to play around with multi-tracks for, for Chris is really cool. And I, I love the end results. I had the opportunity to play around with Kiss multi-tracks. And it's a mind-blowing experience to be able to go in there and actually do the shit that professionals do for real um, with music. Did any of you get a chance to check out any of that music? And that, that go Oh, Bill Phelps. Yeah, those demos are great. I, I mean, it's a really fun listen. So if anyone on this on this show right now has, has not listened to it, go find that thread. Previously unreleased Peter Chris stuff. Oh, okay, um, it's on the board. Okay. Yeah, do check it out. So I haven't heard it. And that uh, everyone listening as well, you know, check them out. If, if you haven't heard them, you're going to hear a completely different sort of Peter Chris than you would expect because this is early '90s um, metal. All right, let's move on to uh, another topic. All right, pick one of the final shows for a DVD. Who did this one? Uh, Kiss Army Sergeant posted this on Saturday. You know it's coming. You know that Kiss is probably going to release an end-of-the-road DVD from one of their final shows coming mm -hmm. up. The question is, which one of these last few shows makes the most people? What say you people? And the options uh, they came up with was Los Angeles, the Hollywood Bowl. I voted mm -hmm. for that. Madison Square Garden, the final show. Dubai? No. Let's not go down that road. Let's yeah, just not go there. Um, <laughs> Sydney, Australia, Acor Stadium. 
or Detroit Little Caesars Arena. So if you had to pick from those or one of your choice, Mark, since you're now off the fence, um, what would you like to see for a venue for the last Kiss Show DVD? Mark? <laughs> <He's frozen. laughs> he has internet problems too. Oh, all right, Ken. All right. Ken? Yeah, I'm here. I'm not frozen. All right, so <laughs> you know, there's supposed to be a special deal going on with the Hollywood Bowl. Supposedly, Gene Simmons said something special going on. Surprises. Surprises. Okay. Um, <laughs> and what surprise <laughs> may be? They 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 change his song on the set list. <laughs> you know, would that be a surprise? But uh, yeah, I don't know. So it could be that if. That surprise is is worth it, I guess. Um, otherwise, uh, the otherwise it would have to be the Madison Square Garden. Um, to me, that's probably the most obvious one that they would do, and will do for a 50th anniversary. Um, you know, they're going to re-record stuff anyway, probably. They're going to fix it in the studio. They're going to they're going to fix like stuff up. Yeah, what are you, talk, you know what are you it'd be nice about? if they if they the, the last two shows if they switched a couple of songs on those last two shows so they can like, expand <laughs> it the DVD uh, a little bit by having a song or two more. The ever optimist Ken. Mm -hmm. Well, we try. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> that's just how I feel. Uh, but yeah, if if the Hollywood Bowl, which they've never played before, uh, that could be. Uh, kind of cool you know you gonna travel for that no i i did not get a ticket i mean there's lots available i, I could you know i i guess i could there's what date is available. it there's what date available. is it i have no idea there's lots available no you don't know you're the you're, that, that, the, that's the, encouraging. you're the kiss on tour available. guy what what the heck you don't know am i holding a book in my hands no i'm holding a scotch you're supposed to, it's supposed to be up here i thought you knew it all i can't there. remember shit Wow. Not, not after wow. Oh, gosh. Not after an uh, Listen, it's nice and warm <laughs> in the city today. I finished eight hours of work, and I went out and got some Konas. And I'd rather be in Hawaii right now. In of fact, course. I'd rather be retired. So I had some Konas, and then I got some scotch. And you think I can remember where I'm supposed to be for the Hollywood what Bowl show? The Hollywood Bowl. Someone on the board knows... Yeah, no, I think it's uh, November the 2nd. I don't know. I, oh, I could look at my tickets. Okay. <laughs> that would be smart. Um, no, I, I would actually like Hollywood Bowl. The Beatles played there. Of course. Uh, and it's an important thing for them. If they were able to change things up a little bit and do something slightly special, say bring Bruce out. Um, Paul McCurdy? You know, no, just Bruce. Yeah, because that's happening. Kulik, not Springsteen, because I think he's yeah, taking the rest of the year off. There's another um, dreamer. <laughs> anyone would know other than me. I'm useless. Mm. So yeah, that would be that would be my preference. But I think it uh, absolutely defaults New York City, Madison Square Garden. Lonnie. Yeah, I think it is New York City, Madison Square Garden. I mean, there's a reason why, an obvious reason why they're doing the last couple shows there. I mean, it's so special for them to play there that they have to be documented in some sort of way. You know, I, I am actually surprised that we have not heard some kind of announcement of any kind of pay-per-view for mm -hmm. one or both of those shows. I mean, <laughs> I, I know I really am. I, I, despite of the debacle of the, of Kiss 2020 goodbye, mm -hmm. I'm surprised that we haven't gotten gotten something about even if you can't be there experience it from your living room something i am actually i mean it's kiss you think they were going to cash in any way they possibly can get any last dollar out of us and all the great people in these comments right now you know you would think that they would try to get something out of us and maybe there's a deal on the table maybe it's not what they want i don't know that's, that's it but aren't you guys surprised or isn't no because obviously cornholes are killing it <laughs> <laughs> <True>. <laughs> i 
<laughs> well, look, I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised. For, anything for me. It's definitely those lashes. I, I'm Go not. Ahead. I'm not. I'm not surprised for for one reason though, because I mean, Julian just touched on the fact that they're not even sold out at these shows. I mean, really, you're going to want to broadcast a three quarter filled arena to, you know, the, you know how they are. They what they want to say, you know. We're the biggest band in the world. This is how the big boys do it. Look at us when we're going out in Madison Square Garden. It was a sellout, right? That's what they want you to think, right? And it's not sold out, obviously, if there's tickets, tickets still available. So maybe they're waiting till, you know, more tickets have been sold. I mean, time is running out for that to happen, I think. We're already going to be in October, right? So, I mean, I don't know how much tickets there are. I mean, Julian would probably have a better idea of how much is available on these nights, but... Uh, Obviously, they're not, but but you know, I I understand what you guys are saying. Madison Square Garden should logically be the the place to end it all or to do the DVD on. But I, I would say that they had more luck with though with Los Angeles, don't you think? They, they, I mean, you even said yourself, Julian, that that the Madison Square Garden show that you went to a while back was terrible. The audience, yeah, so well, maybe that was, tw- that was 2019. The the first yeah. Madison Square Garden. I didn't go to the one at Barclay Center, wherever the hell that is. Yeah, um, so maybe LA, shit. maybe LA crowds are better for for something like that, you know? Yeah, the, the forum was absolutely fantastic because uh, I went to that one as well, that tour. Um, but how how does it translate? I, I again, when you go in and you're playing what is an important venue, come on, it's the Hollywood Bowl for fuck's sake. Mm-hmm. So I think there are some restrictions on what they can do in terms of pyro. At that venue, I'm not sure that I think I read that on the internet, so it must be true. Um, or maybe we're just so fucking hopeful that they do something special. I mean, we're we're four plus years into this end of the road thing, and they've mm-hmm. dangled this carrot all the way through that we've invited everyone. Yeah, well, come on, look at Bruce. Bruce looks like he'd be ready to go any day of the week that he's not playing with Grand Funk. But he's never made it onto the stage. No. And he I don't think he's done anything to piss them off either. So, you know, you, you could see Vinny not getting an invite, but it's like, <laughs> yeah. come on, we're, run, we're running out of time. Um, did any of you watch any of the Australian press in the last few days, the videos of them on TV? Mm. I watched a little bit, not a whole lot, though. I mean... Ken, you're muted. Yeah, Ken, you're muted. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I watched one today, the most recent one. Uh, I think I watched another one the other day. Um, uh, yeah, it was okay. It's the same old, you know, stuff they say. Um uh, I I don't know. Yeah, I I saw the one you know the meatloaf thing that was today. So, but uh, I don't know if you shouldn't be saying meatloaf or or not. Um, you know, under the circumstances, I guess. Yeah, where's Chicago? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. The South American crowds are fantastic. Yeah. That that one from South America should be the one document, or there there was one with a fisheye lens from Germany. I think it was way back in the beginning, or maybe that was another tour. I can't fucking remember now. Yeah, that was a good appearance. I I thought they did some. They managed not to say anything about welcoming 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 us with open arms and open legs. Yeah, none of that. I don't think they I heard the word gymnasium. No. They didn't rip Ace and Peter too much. <clears throat> no. They, yeah. So, you know, but they do the voices. It's like the makeup has masked so many of kind of the negative side of aging for so long. All right. Did I get everyone mm-hmm. on where to film a final DVD? Yes. Mark, I, get, I got you. I think yeah. so. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park versus Sergeant Peppers. <laughs> Two wow. spectacular TV movies. Or well, I that, wasn't, wasn't Sergeant Peppers theatrical? That'll yeah, be and, and actually, that that deal was on the board. Was questioning oh. not necessarily the you know comparing those two 
but but it was saying you know ki should have ki kiss uh accepted the uh part in sergeant pepper where they asked them first to be the future villain band and they turned it they turned it down and then aerosmith you know obviously played that role um kiss turned it down and you know went with doing of course their kiss meets the phantom of the park movie um so the question was you know should they have gotten this done the sergeant pepper thing or not um versus kiss meets phantom you know i i think it was still the right choice even though kiss meets the phantom of the park is obviously a a goofy uh movie b movie um and sergeant pepper i guess you'd call that a b movie too they're both not that you know that that good really they're they're pretty even in their goofiness and quality andrew's got a new version or a redo upgrade of phantom coming out which includes the original commercials that were included in the 1978 and that's kind of cool yeah, that'll be fun. Lonnie, any any view on uh, Kiss as the future villain band? Or are you too young? Maybe maybe I'm a little too young. For Did you ever see play. that performance of Aerosmith in in that movie, or you've never seen the movie? Probably. I've never seen the movie. I've never <laughs> seen the movie either. <laughs> I've, I've, really I, I've watched the scenes with Aerosmith. I think I saw it in the movie theater. Not. Believe it or not, I think I saw that in the movie theater. Really? <laughs> when it came know, I've never seen the movie to really comment, but. I, I I'd like a a good live episode of maybe us watching Kiss Me the Phantom as a four summer or a five summer yeah. with Daniel. Yes, that'd we, be hilarious. We could, we could comment and and laugh at kind how of commercial off the rails yeah. the movie is, and we could watch Andrew's version together and get Andrew on here too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Do a, a live screening of his movie and uh, have have a bit of a Kiss conversation along with it. No, I I don't think. Kiss could play a dangerous band, and Aerosmith is the perfect villain band because Kiss at that point was too safe. It would have completely, uh, yeah, yeah, it would have crushed everything that they kind of, you know, we sell lunch boxes, but we're villains. Well, <laughs> right. kind of, yeah. you know, whereas mm -hmm. coked out um, lunatics at that we'll point, seventy five maybe. In Aerosmith were pretty cool, um, and you do get come together out of it, which Aero, uh, Kiss could never. It's a great version, out. great version of come together. Of yeah, course, I mean, you know, George Martin produced all that, all those uh, the music on Sergeant yeah, Pepper's. He, he didn't have much soundtrack. to do. Yeah, but he didn't have much to do when it came to Aerosmith. They did three takes, and he said, you know, just do that. You're, you're good. Yeah. Well, that, and then he said, I think he said, uh, Jeff Beck's playing tonight, so they all buggered off. Uh, ah! <laughs> to get them out of the studio so yeah aerosmith wins that hands down all right let's go into um has there ever been a band who's lied as much as kiss oh kiss faq guys hmm. <laughs> i you think they're trying to sell shit the monkeys I They're like know. politicians. Do you actually, but, does that, do you, but does that make it right? It's not about right. No one's saying anything about making there, it right. Is there any band who's every band lies? Yeah. Every band has every an band lies. Okay, well, I, I don't think I've you know what? And I don't I can Except see the eyes. I can see the Except eyes rolling Rush. already. Yeah, I have never seen <laughs> I've never heard Rush do a single thing like this where they said we're we're we're, we're retiring and that's the oh no, we're back, guys. Uh you know, okay, we're... so what about how they handled John Rutsey? What about him? They didn't do anything wrong with him. The guy couldn't do it. The guy was a pulled up a diabetic, him, right? and the manager told him that the management told him to, that they couldn't continue in the band with the way he was, that he was going to put himself into a wooden box. They had to get rid of him. Okay, so here we go. Lies equals hype. hype. Oh, boy, here we go. So 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 lying that's it. that's it. it's accepted as long as you're in a band and Motley Crue. Sort of yeah, Crue are I, liars. Yeah, I, I would I would say Crue gives just about anyone a yeah. pretty damn especially good that run. contract run for their money. Yeah, yeah. 
Kiss never signed a fucking contract and made a exactly. big deal of it, and then turfed Mick out of. The, I mean, t- threw their sound out the window. So, I mean, are are there other bands that lie? Yeah, every band lies. Um, I actually agree with the hype angle. I think Kiss fans, uh, me included, I think we bought Gosh. into a fantasy. Are not liars. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. So, do we buy? Do we buy into the fantasy and then twist it into oh, it's a lie and clutch our pearls, Lonnie? No, I think we do. We we all buy into the fantasy. I mean, we've talked about Psycho Circus abundantly on the show the last month. Um, we buy into the fantasy. Um, we, we creatures of the night. I mean, Ace Frehley's on the cover. I mean, we 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 buy into the fantasy of it, and like, oh well, you all know, lies. For whatever, for whatever reason, Ace Frehley didn't sing on this album, even though he's been singing on the previous albums. And well, come to find out, we buy into the fantasy. I think lies equal hype is a very, um, very good explanation. Is it? Is it? Is it lies, Mark? Sure, but. Mark, I, I I I know you love Rush, and I know you can't I know you can't say a disparaging thing about Rush, but I'm sure at some point in their career, Rush wasn't completely honest with their fans too. Um, be, on the on the sake of selling either concert tickets or the sake of selling albums, they all do it. Every single band does. It. Honestly, I've I've you know what, and and I wouldn't be surprised if they did do that. You know, because of because of the fact that so many bands that do do that. But I, I honestly can say that I've never heard them ever say anything like that ever. Like I've never heard them say that. They've said full out that you know we've had lean times in our career. They've said it openly that they've had lean times. They, they've never said you know we've played to two hundred fifty thousand people in Brazil or in all these ridiculous things that Gene would say. You know that they they've said that you know during this time it was you know not that we weren't as popular as we were. And like I said, I've I've never heard them outright say something that ridiculously, you know, untrue. Yeah, but is that just because KISS predominantly for our generation has people who became fans when they were seven and highly impressionable, you know, children. So therefore we bought into things much more irrationally than say the Rush fans, which were kind of known for being a little bit smarter and the kids that you'd beat up in school. I mean, does that just mean we were gullible? I don't think well, Kiss does like Ken. Yeah, it was more like, I mean, going back where they, you didn't know what they looked like and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, is it a lie? Um, that's not a lie. It's just, you know, it's kind of make it more superhero ish kind of stuff going on. And you always wondered what they looked like. And, and then, the, the stage, you know, show and all that, you know, there's lots of, there's times where they said that we have, we we're doing the biggest stage show we've ever done. Probably like, you know, 96 even. Um, and, it, it's, 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 and it's not. <laughs> yeah. The best albums. Yeah. Yeah. With all that stuff. <laughs> and yeah. There's stuff where people didn't play on whatever albums, but you know, you look, go back to the beach boys and other groups in the, 60s where you thought the beach boys were playing all the, the music but it was the wrecking crew playing the music on, on the albums and stuff like that um uh Paul, yeah they probably they fabricated or or <clears throat> a number of things and or, or tried to yeah i guess it, the word was hype you know hype hype up everything um oh, well, that they could you're right Kent. and like People talk about farewell tours, and God knows we've bashed them about the farewell tour in 2000 on this show. But I mean, my brother saw Ozzy on the farewell tour in 1992, for Christ's sake. Yeah. You know, I mean, they all do it. They it all too. lie to create hype and to create sales, money. or rather, it's money. records or money. concerts. Money. It's money. It's a business. It would, you're going to do whatever you can to make more money. That's the yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so thinking about this final comment, I made the mistake of reading some Eric Carr contracts. Holy mm-hmm. shit! It is all Uh-oh. I can say on that. It explains so much of what we thought we knew, 
and I, I still don't have a full picture, so I'm not going to really go into much detail, but just uh, just brutal. What what I will say to anyone who thinks that we're bashing, we're not bashing, we're talking about no. discussing, criticizing. We, we also gush over things regularly. Same with people on the FAQ. You know, people sometimes forget that and start saying, what a bunch of haters. No, there, there's criticism. There's sometimes inelegantly expressed criticism. Um, but fundamentally, KISS is something, an entity that's brought us all together. And that goes for everyone who's watching live, everyone who's going to tune into these podcasts later, whether you agree or disagree with something that we've said. You know, that's the wonderful thing about KISS. There are also geeks in the Rush orbit who probably debate whether the 80s albums are stronger than the 70s. <laughs> uh, you know, funny. how hold, hold Your Fire is the that's best funny. album KISS ever. Uh, rush ever right. released um power windows is up there in my opinion though. oh no shout shout out to to words <laughs> it's, it's, it's not it's better i'm saying it's, it's up there <laughs> they lost me after signals yeah go listen to roll the bones change change that perspective dig, dig out those albums but it goes for any band i mean yeah, the the van halen community uh, i mean in light oh. of that that donington video leaking mm. it, it was shocking to read some of the van halen fan forums and they were like wait there are groups of hoarders who have rare material that doesn't circulate and they're, <laughs> now they're and I'm, I'm sitting there learning going, oh my god oh, that's hysterical shit. See, but, that, but that just shows how <laughs> how much kiss people are into this you know most music fans don't don't know about this kind of stuff most people don't and probably don't yeah. even care about that kind of stuff you know it's it's people like us that are like crazy enough to be hunting down rare footage and rare recordings i mean that's the thing that i find funny is that most people who are on these kind of boards and on these kind of forums and stuff like that think that this is normal mm -hmm like what we do it's not normal the regular real life Wait, man people we're, don't we're do this normal? Shit. talking about nobody <laughs> does this uh, nobody goes out and does all this we're we're just a five percentile that that, that does this you know no we're the one percenters yes there you and, go. and that goes for everyone who's listening i mean even in aerosmith i mean i posted a sample of a song years ago which was just off a of nine lives of all thing cassette and they released that version on the new greatest hits and they're like how did you have this in, in advance of all that <laughs> it's just a fucking advanced tape um Relax. which i've, I've yeah. remastered so i mean it's nothing special um but i will say that is the awesome thing about the kiss community is how hardcore and deep we have gone there are other communities you know grateful dead has an insane mm -hmm. community but that's much more egalitarian and put it all into the public good led zeppelin's got a crazy fucking community as well um yeah. when it goes to that nirvana has a pretty crazy community uh, again it, it's all on how you look into these communities as an outsider so fucking Keep being fucking weird, people, because we'll keep having great topics to kind of sound off on. Yes. Um, I, I think that is it. I want to thank everyone who's taken the opportunity to join us today. Um, oh, my son needs cooking help. Um, but for now, <laughs> from Lonnie, Ken, Mark, and myself, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again. Liar. <laughs>